Welcome to Hawkett Podcast. My name is Amit Huja, and today we have returning guest Darcy Diamond, a mother, wife, and adult film actress. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? I'm doing. I'm doing well. Doing well. What you been up to lately? Since last time, a lot. Tell us about that. What? What? I know you've done a lot. You got married. You got pregnant. You moved, and you've done a lot of things in the adult industry. So tell us about all that. Um, when was the last time that we did the podcast? That was... I don't even remember. I don't remember. Did I have my eyes and tongue done yet or no? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. So yeah, it's December, December 13th, 2022. I did my red eye, tattooed it. And then I went and saw Luna Cobra again, February 16th, uh, last year. And then he did finish this eye. And then uh, uh, April 5th, he split my tongue. And then we had that done. And then um, follow June, we had the award show and I won my first award of last year in Vegas here uh, at the Alt Porn Awards for Best Gonzo. And then that's when I met, or not met, but I saw my husband and uh didn't talk to him until like obviously a month later and then after that we just been glued to each other ever since so tell us about how you both met each other because i know there's a story behind that uh well he says it way better than i do but um when i got to the venue with the people that i went with with alterotic uh, we had to like get our wristbands, I think it was, or tickets or something, uh, so we can get checked in. And then he was just setting up the event, and I like looked over, and I was talking to Slava, and I was like, "Who is this person?" Like, I can couldn't take my eyes off of him. And um, obviously, we did not talk at all the whole entire night. And then not until like the month later. But uh, I like was standing there and I tripped over myself and fell into the wall and it was so awkward because he was just like, and then what yeah. happened? And then what happened? Uh, we won an award, but I, uh, that was awkward because I didn't think that we were gonna win. Uh, because I was just like, we're up against like big names, so, you know. I'm okay with just being here and just sitting here and enjoying the show. And then when we got called up, I was just like, oh, shit, I actually have to go up on stage for the first time and stand in front of a bunch of people. How, ner but, how nervous were you for that? Very nervous. Did you, like, take anything before you went on stage to, like, calm yourself down or not? Nah? Oh, God, no. No? Nah. No. Um, The people I went with, the one girl was, like, uh, freaking out that, you know, uh our names were being mentioned so she's like we're gonna win and I looked at her I was like we're definitely not winning and she's like yeah we are don't be like that and I was like um if you see who we're up against I'm pretty sure like there's big movies on there us that was like our first time in the states doing anything like that so I'm pretty sure we're not gonna win and then all of a sudden it was just like you know they're like, oh, Glam Glamgons too, and then mentioned all our names, and we're just like, oh, God. So then we went up there, and then this year for that exact same award show, um, we won two awards for two of the movies that I was in, which was um, Ink Motel 4 and then Neon Vampires. So how did the opportunity to work with Ivan come about for you? Uh, it was... I got a hold of him in July of 2022 because I had tagged Alterotic in a post that I was going to be in Vegas for August to shoot, which I thought was already the plan to shoot with Alterotic, not realizing it was the old owner that reached out to me and then used Alterotic's name. So when I tagged them, you know, he messaged me and then I was just like, oh, hey, like, I'm excited to shoot with you guys next month. And he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, 
are are you going to be in Vegas? I was like, yeah. And then, you know, I told him everything that was happening going on. And then right then and there, I realized that what I had planned wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So then I canceled those other plans. And then Slava and I made plan completely different plans. And then ever since then, we're like this. He's like my dad in the industry. That's cool. So what else have you been doing in the industry besides working with him? Um, I shot with Inked Vixens. Um, I did, I don't know how many scenes, only like a couple of them are released on the actual site. Um, so we're just waiting for the rest of them to drop eventually at some point. But I've kind of taken a break. My last shoot was February of this year. And then we found out that we were expecting. And I was just like, morning sickness every single day like I just don't want to shoot I just want to be with my family and that's it so we're still attending like the award shows and stuff like that still have nominations uh we're going to LA next month um I have three solo nominations um for hottest ink something another one is um something to do with alternative girls and then the other one is like stankiest feet but my thought was is it like a stinky feet contest or stankiest I don't know mm -hmm. anyways my thought was they would do that and then um you know announce the winner so it's, it's odd that we have to get voted for it it's, it's weird but I'm excited because they haven't um, they didn't list any of the movies for the movie nominations. We don't like we know the categories, but we don't know who is in the run for like what movies or what movie has been picked, I guess. And then there's other um, alternative. Uh, what is that? Other alternative um, categories on there where it wasn't listed for fan voting. So it's going to be interesting to see the difference in this show compared to last year's show. Mm -hmm. So I didn't ask you this question when you came all last time on the show, but what does Darcy Diamond mean and how did you come up with the stage name or the brand name for yourself? So my real name is Darcy. Mm -hmm. So obviously um, I'm not the type of person that would be able to use a fake name because if someone was to try to call me by a different name, I'd be dazed off, not realizing that they're speaking to me. I'd be like, do, do, do. So um, when I was 18, people just kept calling me because I, I was obviously in the adult industry anyways um, and doing other things. So uh, which I remember, I think we talked about something and then you're <laughs> the episode got yeeted from YouTube. Mm -hmm. And then I had to re-upload it like a few weeks after that. And it was okay. It wasn't even the episode that got dinged. It was your link that you sent me. Really? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah, I got in trouble for my link too. And then I finally was able to go live on YouTube again uh, recently after figuring it out after a full year. Um, yeah, so then people just like would be like, oh, Darcy Diamond. It kind of had rings, like it kind of had a ring to it. So then, um, in what was it, 2010? So yeah, that was 2008. 2010, I went into a tattoo shop the one day with an old friend. Uh, well, we were best friends at that time, and she wanted to get tattooed. So I sat there jokingly, being like, "I want to get Darcy Diamond tattooed on my lower abdomen." And then a week later, this tattoo artist. I see this like message request on Facebook and it's like, Hey, I remember what you said. Um, do you still want to get that tattoo? And I was just like, what the heck? Um, sorry, I was trying to find chapstick. <laughs> I don't know where I put it. So then I was just like, uh, yeah, I actually really like this. And it's like, well, come in next week and I can do it this day. And I was like, uh, okay. And then that's who did like 90% of my tattoos. Like so tell us about everywhere. Tell, us, tell us about the tattoos you have and what did it mean i know i asked you this last time but i don't remember what we really talked about because that episode we did was like long on i don't remember it yeah and so many episodes after yours so it's like short <laughs> yeah i've gotten a bunch of not really a bunch of new ones since then but 
actually I have um obviously the like the black widow here um and then I got that done in 2014 I got this one and done, are done in 2016 which is the death head hawk moth because I'm obsessed with obviously moths and black widows there's other meanings behind it but now it's not so true <laughs> well I mean it's not that, that it's not so true but that's in the past in the sense uh for the black widow um I have a um lotus on the back of my neck which would I don't know if it's going to be hard to see because I'm in this <laughs> can you yeah. see it yeah I can see it uh that was that's my mom's and my favorite flower um obviously the mama koi and baby koi so this is for my oldest son because i got this as my first tattoo when i was 17 and then i upgraded it to this when 2010 came after i found this artist um so yeah uh we did we started on this one first and then did this one it took like three years to complete because i was so busy with dancing on stage that i never had the time and then um Obviously, I have Beauty and the Beast here because it's like one of my all-time favorite movies. And then under the under um, boob area, he did in 2019, and that was the worst pain I've ever felt for a tattoo. Um, why so? Why did you feel? Why did you feel pain there? Was it like just a spot that you got it done? Yeah, it was the sternum. Ooh. Yeah, it was brutal. And then, you know, the Darcy Diamond tattoo on my stomach, the the alpha female symbol I have around the belly button. I'm, I'm stoked so far that the tattoos haven't been wrecked with how big my stomach is and everything in, is right now. And then um, the newest tattoo I got was when Anthony flew out to come see me. I think it was in December. Sorry. Excuse me. Oh. Um, when he flew out to see me in December, I think it was, or was it was either November or December. Um, my girlfriend um uh, was gonna tattoo for us, but she thought for some reason I was getting a suicide girl logo. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I sent her um Morticia and Adam Gomez, like the tarot card, the lovers. And um I sent her like the Miss and Mr. Pyramid Head um that are standing together so i was like actually we want this on the card but we don't want marticia and adam gomez because it just looks it looks lame mm -hmm. and everybody has that so i don't want it and then so she's like oh i'm gonna have to do this up this is gonna take a couple days and i was like okay so we were supposed to get it and then go see my dad and then you know come back to edmonton so then we went and saw my dad, and then that's when he asked my dad, my aunt, and my grandma for my hand in marriage. And my dad said yes, and so everything just kind of worked out perfectly that as soon as we got back, that's when we got the matching tattoos. That's so that's so sweet. <laughs> I, I will say that you both make a very good couple. I've seen the oh, photos you posted, and you both are like, like you both needed a meet in your life at one at some point. Yeah, I'm glad it's not now and not back when we were both like, obviously, you know, just doing our thing because it wouldn't have worked out back then. Mm -hmm. So what about the tattoo that's in the middle of your forehead? Uh, your eyebrows? Triple goddess. It's the mother of the crone, the maiden. It's spiritual to me. So I got that done October 2022. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. I so can't... Now... So now, what are some of the biggest challenges you have faced in your journey as an adult star or just being a mom or just in general? Um, being judged every single day. Like, it's insane how much hate people get just for either being friends with me or, you know, being in a relationship. It's It's insane because they think I'm just like this monster even though that's not the case at all yeah that's crazy I don't understand people nowadays I feel like people have kind of like lost their minds nowadays they like go way too fast in judging people without even to get to know them well right like it's insane it, but it doesn't bother me I just 
I just stay home and do my own thing. And I'm stoked now because now that um, Alex and I are in the States, we're not separated anymore and we're all here together. So it's not like, you know, me having to come down to the States and then Alex being at my mom's and then, you know, Anthony having to fly to Canada to come visit because I'm having trouble with the border. Like we had a really good drive down and experience this last go around um, because we never got hassled once. I had my Indian status papers, letter from the tribe, and they just let us go. And then I ugly cried so hard. So now tell us about your experience working with uh, XPW and what role did you play in that whole thing? <laughs> so they just would constantly ask Slava because he's like the he would take the photos and stuff like the action shots mm -hmm. and like the promo videos and all that. And I remember him first being like, hey, you should come to this show um, and come check it out. I'm like, OK. So I did. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm obsessed. And then, you know. Every time I would come down, I didn't realize I'd be there for when there was an event. And then Slava would be like, they want you in the show. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, they want to put uh, you into the show and, you know, have you like during intermission or whatever. And I'm like, uh, okay. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm not a social person or anything, but it's both times I loved it. And I was just like, oh, I need to do more. And, uh, well, obviously being pregnant now, that's kind of difficult, but maybe thing like, I don't, I don't know if he's with XPW anymore shooting for them, but he's like still doing other events for other shows. So tell us about the character you played, the uh, problematic nun. Cause I was, oh. I was looking, I was looking <laughs> it up what you were doing. So I could ask you about this. <laughs> Yeah, so the first time was the Miss Extreme contest, which wasn't actually a contest. It was just a, something that was a part of the show because I was confused. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, this is brutal. I don't want to be a part of a contest, but if you guys want me to be in it, I'll just do it. And then I was like, okay, sweet. Nobody's winning. Um, and then, because uh, that's when I just got my other eye tattooed. And then Problematic Nun um, I'm trying to think of what day that was. That was last year, sometime before June. Uh, I Slava calls me. He's like, "Hey, I'm getting you a nun outfit off Amazon. What size are you?" And I'm like, "Why? Like, cause they want you that are doing that problematic show. And they want you to come out as a nun with a paddle, and you know, um, smoke people with the paddle on their butt or whatever." And I was like, "Uh, okay, I guess I could do that." And then um, when I went out there to go do it, uh, I was, like, so scared. I was behind the curtain, and I was looking at Kat and Rob, and I was like, oh, my God, you guys, I'm going to have a panic attack. They're like, do you need more water? I'm like, yeah. I'm, like, chugging water. I'm like, I really got to be here. Like, I don't think I could do this. And then, like, well, your name is being called, so you got to go. And I was like, oh, shit. So then when – I go to work at a club. I just like, okay, well, now I just got to go in autopilot mode. That's exactly what happened. I just, uh, there's like a thing that just like switched. And then I just like went out there and then I came back and I was just like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> but so I ended up. So overall, how was your experience? Like being on stage, doing that character and all that stuff? I loved it. I want to do it again. It was great. Like, just those shows are just, like, the greatest because it's, like, real and raw and, like, there's real blood and everything. So now, how do you handle criticism or negative feedback in your work that you do? I know we already kind of touched upon this, but do you have any further to say? Um, I just I just kind of laugh at it and just let it go because it's if it's either you know the customers or the other girls you work with because a lot of the girls aren't girls girls they're all about themselves um I just will sit there and be like what am I gonna do if you don't like me you don't like me I'm not gonna sit here and change your mind or you know if you heard something bad from somebody else it's because that person I used to be good friends with has done me dirty and whatever they told you you can sit there and think about you know 
not even think about, but you can just make your own judgment. So was there anyone that stabbed you in the back as your friend or like a coworker that you worked with, but later on you were like, why did I work with them? Uh, all the time, which is why I don't really hang out or talk with anyone. It's just me and my family because no matter what, someone's always going to try to use you for something and then you're just going to get burned anyways. Damn right. So, you are absolutely correct. Yeah, I've nope. learned that myself. That's why I don't have that many friends, even online. I do, but I've kind of like distanced myself from them because all I know how to do is make jokes about me or by by, by culture. And like, yeah, I'm kind of backing away from you and like evaluating if I want to be your friend or uh, acquaintance now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just, you know, us, the kids, and then my few close gaming best friends. Um if because like if you ever check online that's who I'm always like tagging in my posts we actually just met my first gaming best friend um because he was at EVO this past week um so after yeah we, we went and saw him like after midnight with my little one and him and it was great they just like I just sat back because I was already like me being pregnant and tired I'm like Ugh. <laughs> But just the conversations that they were having, I was just, like, happy. So how is the game stream going for you? Um, it's, it's hard to get on. It's hard to get on and press go live. I can relate to that. I can relate when, to that. I started doing gaming myself recently. It's like, one day, I'm like, okay, I want to do it. And then I say, like, yeah, I don't feel like going live. It's tiring. It's, it's honestly, people say that. Doing content creating and doing live is tiring. I don't know how some people, some people can go live for like five hours straight. I can, but it's the getting on part. It's just like going to the gym. I don't, it's, the hardest part is for me to get out of the vehicle and go in. Once I go in, I'm fine. But same with like gaming. It's funny because my husband's like, you haven't been on for like a week. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And he's like, well, that's not an excuse. You should be going on. I'm like, and mentally i'm not well to go on like he's like the people go on all the time even if not i was like oh trust me they don't and i was like it's just it's, it's really hard so if you're not you know and then even when you are it's still hard to go on because you're just like oh god mm -hmm. and then once you finally hit play you're just like okay why did i do this sooner but it's just it's exhausting i agree with you yeah yeah I'm I'm the same way. Like I I've been doing a lot of like uh, Nintendo games and P uh, PC games. Like they're fun to do, but they're long. So it's like each I do like an hour each, and they go like five to seven episodes. So like to the point like I want to continue the game and finish it up because I was playing Tomb Raider, the 2013 version. I played up to like the point where I don't remember where I stopped, but I was like, do I want to continue this game or do something else? So like I I did completely a different game. I like I was getting kind of tired with it. Um, well, I, I really enjoy laying in bed and watching Anthony play. Like, I'm obsessed with it. So I'm like, I'd rather just lay here and watch you play than me go on. He's like, why don't we just play together? Because he plays storyline games. And so, like, the first one, before we found out that I was pregnant, I was so sick. Like, the, the sickness it gave me just from the screen, like, I was in the bathroom all day in and out, and I just, like, shoot out of bed and, like, running sick, is everything okay? I'm like, I feel sick. And then we found out that we were expecting, and then he played this other game. Um, fuck, I forget what it's called now. Um, if, if he comes back in here, I'll, I'll mention it because mm -hmm. I don't remember it, but there's this game that he's now playing, which is like un, um, Dying Undying Light or mm -hmm. something, and I'm actually obsessed with watching it, because it's not making me nauseous, and it's not scaring the crap out of me. And I'm like not easy to scare when it comes to things, but with the, the other games, for some reason, I was just like, mm -mm. I love watching, but it still sucks, but this one, I'm like, all for it. I'm like, oh. it'd be smart if I just like streamed it while he did it. But I was just like, you need to stream because he's 
really good at what he does on there for any of the games. So I know that when he does decide to start streaming, that he'd do phenomenal because of like how he likes to do his games and everything. Nice. That's nice. So how does he go about doing all that? Does he have like a strategy that he like often choose a game, do a play for like a like few a few weeks, and then do a different game? Yeah, he just was like, "Hey, pick one," and I'm like, "Oh, so it's usually Dead by Daylight or Fortnite," because I love watching him play the Survivor, and I also love watching him play as Killer. Mm-hmm. So when we first started talking in July of last year, I didn't realize he was a gamer, and then when we decided to like FaceTime. It was like before the middle of July, and then we were just we just were on FaceTime like twenty four seven, like it was just natural. We just couldn't get off the phone with each other. We'd fall asleep on the phone with each other, and you know, with the kids and everything. And he'd be gaming out, and I'm just like, I can't remember who said it first, but we're just like, one of us is like, you played Dead by Daylight. And then I found out that he's been playing since the very beginning of it. And I was just like, I've met my match. Oh, that's so that's so cute. That's so adorable. You both have a, seen a similar thing that you both enjoy doing. Yeah, like he's in the entertainment industry, but on the other side, like not on the adult side. In the, like he's a professional dancer and everything. And absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, I'm not gonna lie, he is handsome. I will say, I'll be honest with you. Like he, he is attractive. <laughs> Thank you. He is flawless. So, what other things you bond the that you and Anthony bond again a bond with besides gaming? What else do you guys like are like very close with when it comes uh, to interest? Adventures. Um. Obviously, kids, family. Um. He's getting me. So I have a huge thing with food. Mm-hmm. I'm, I can't. I like what I like, and then I have a hard time like venturing off and trying different things. So he's uh, he um, he makes this. It's like a I think it's, it's a Cuban dish. So mm-hmm. it's just eggs and rice, and then the salt and stuff like that. And I remember he he made it for me the first the first time, and I was like mortified to eat it because I don't like my food touching. It grosses me out, but now I'm, like, obsessed with it. And then uh, in Canada, I'm obsessed with poutines ever since I was a kid. But in the States, there's no poutines. So he took me to this spot. It was a Mexican spot with, like, a Mexican poutine. And I, like, looked at it, and I'm like, "Mm mm-mm. So I ate it, and I'm like, okay, that was good. And then now I'm, like, obsessed with it. What's the weirdest food you've ever had? What's the weirdest food? Yeah. I don't know. Um, Like, I guess the weirdest thing I ate, the grossest thing I ate would be mm-hmm. a cricket. Oh, really? Yeah, that was disgusting. That was like in 2017. Was it like, did someone make you do it or was it like a dare? So one of my good friends, um, when he was dating another girl that was on stage, um, they just got back because he took her for her birthday to like the Harry Potter hotel um, because she was obsessed. And then they flew back to Canada, went to Banff. And then he's like, hey, we're coming to visit you guys at work tonight, like us and our other girlfriend. And I'm like, he's like, I'm bringing you guys a snack. You get to pick one of three flavors you get um dill pickle sour cream and onion or barbecue and i'm like sour cream and onion because i'm thinking chips mm-hmm. so he's like okay you gotta promise me that you're gonna eat this when it is in your hand and i was like okay no problem because why would i be thinking that you know they'd be picking up crickets so then they come in like okay close your eyes and they're all laughing and then so T and I, we both closed our eyes and had them out. And then there's this little box. And I'm like, going like this. And I'm like, I'm scared to open my eyes right now. And then I go to open it and I'm gagging. There's a maggot and a cricket in there that are like sour cream and onion flavor. 
And I'm like, "Mm -mm, I'm not doing this. He's like, you said you would, so you have to. And I was like, oh, God. I started crying. And then, you know, uh, my girlfriend that got her box first just ate both of them, no problem. I was like, what is wrong with you? And then so I, like, opened my bag, and I had, like, long nails at this time. So I'm, like, opening just my nails, and I'm like, I can't do this. So then if I finally, after, like, an hour of crying and squealing, I just, like, stuck it in my mouth, put it in my mouth, and, like, was, like, chewing on it and, like, trying to swallow it and gag. It was gross. And speaking about it's making me nauseous right now. Yeah, I'm like, I can't. That bugs are so have you been making any only fans content late, lately i know now you're pregnant have, have you been doing that no uh Anthony and i have been talking about it and trying to figure out ideas and whatnot um so we have we're thinking about you know doing some pregnancy stuff but um other than that it's just i still have old stuff like not old stuff but just stuff that's been sitting there that I need to put out and whatnot. Um, but I haven't done anything since the beginning of the year. Mm. Oh, and I, and I remember I was going to say, oh, continue. Continue? Yeah, continue on. Are, are, are you done? You're finished? Oh, You're yeah, on? yeah. Because I haven't, I haven't really done anything. Um, like, there, <laughs> I was doing like, extreme like fetish type things where it involved like Mm -hmm. um but now that I'm pregnant I can't really do that because I don't want to risk anything so I'm just like okay well I can take it easy (laughs) so now tell us about the um maternity photographs you did when you became like a goth queen that's Uh, okay when I saw those photos like yeah that's exactly what's going in my mind you look like a goth queen Thank you. Uh, so once I finally finished on stage, because I came back to Canada end of March and then did my tour and then obviously had to end it June 1st with my last day in Brandon, because then once I stopped sucking in, my stomach would not stop growing. Mm-hmm. And then so I messaged Lane, who's like one of my favorite Canadian photographers who I'm, I've been shooting with since 2017 I was like hey uh, I know we talked about a maturity shoot uh I, I plan on leaving this date to the states so I'm only available for you know these two dates in Canada between driving around and everything and then so he's like okay well let's do this date and I'm like okay because originally that dress and I had a bunch of crowns we were gonna do like a Wednesday Adams type theme shoot last year that was like March last year when I bought those and I never used them and then I was like well now I know the reason why I had these outfits this was the reason for it obviously and we finally get to use it like over a year later and then so I was just like fuck I have to go find them because I had to I got up that day to shoot um in the morning I was like nope I'm way too sick I need to take my collectin because I I won't be able to do this till later so I woke up in the morning message was like hey um because we didn't set a time he's like oh you can come anytime this morning this afternoon or whatever time and I was like yeah this morning's not gonna work out for me I'm feeling super sick I took two to collect or I took it to collect and I'll take another one later and the afternoon nap it off and then I'll come so he was worried that I was going to flake because girls always flake. I have never flaked on him. Um, so I was like, if you come, you come. If you don't, you don't. And I'm like, I'm coming. I'm just making sure that I don't feel nauseous because it's brutal. And um, so, yeah, I was like, I'll be there for 4 p.m. I woke up at 3.30 p.m. And I'm like, oh, God, because I forgot to set an alarm. So I quickly jumped in the shower for five minutes. I got out. Um, just quickly did my face within like another 10 and then it was like a 15 minute drive there so I just like I was like oh shit I have to grab my outfits so I quickly ran into the garage and there was like three bins because it's all at my cousin's place Um, so I'm like in the garage I opened the bins and then I finally found it in the last bin grabbed that grabbed my boots grabbed my makeup 
uh, so I could finish it and then found the crowns and then I just took off was there exactly at four o'clock and then as he was setting up I was just like finishing my like just straightening my hair and whatnot and then we were just shooting and it just turned out perfect now those photos came out very good thank you there's the, way the, more the way the photographer did like the lighting and like the how he centered you in the middle and like the background all uh, flow together with the dress and everything it just came out very good yeah that was a new backdrop he had he's like i don't have to put, edit a, a backdrop in i don't need to like you know do photoshop so i'm let's I'm stoked that, you know, we have this outfit for this background because even with the color, I can't wait till I get the color to post it because it was so good. As soon as it like, because I have a screen that's like big that just sits there. And then when he shoots, I can see everything and I'm just squealing. And I'm like, oh my God, look at this. Before you take a photo, just look at it. You ever thought of doing one with Anthony, Anthony and you both together? Yes, actually. Um, my photographer wants to come out in September and do a shoot out in, like, the desert somewhere. I can't remember what he said, like, what area and whatnot, but he wants to fly out and shoot. So now going back to the tour you did for your um, stage, how was that? How did that go about at first, it was terrible. Well, what happened? Anything serious or just tiredness and stuff? The morning sickness was so bad. Mm -hmm. I should have messaged my doctor for Declectin instantly, but I waited for like two weeks and I wasn't able to perform properly on stage because I'm like trying to make myself look normal and not get sick. And like, you know, I'm like trying to swallow puke practically. And I'm like, mm. okay, well, don't don't talk otherwise you're gonna end up blowing chunks on stage and then I finally ordered I finally got him to send in Declectin and it was insane because I took it and then it, it knocked me out like it put me to sleep now it doesn't put me to sleep mm. but it was it was brutal like up until my last week my last week was my best week out of the whole three months it was I forgot how dead uh, spring is and it's about spring breakup um, in the oil field uh, industry because then you know the truckers aren't driving a lot of the people are laid off for spring and so I was just like oh this is why I never work at this time of year I'm always traveling or doing something so I was just like well I guess I shit the bed on this one so how, how did it go like the last few weeks you after you like but like a break to focus on your pregnancy. How did that week go for you? Uh, it was stressful because I was like, oh, I'm not working. What am I doing? And then, you know, my girlfriend wanted me to house sit for her, for her dogs in the house while she goes to her son's graduation. And then when I wasn't doing that, I was just visiting family. So I drove to see my grandparents like an hour, drove five hours to see my dad one way, and then six hours to go see my mom and my little one. So it was just like nonstop traveling back and forth until Anthony and his son flew up. And then we went and did the West Image Mall uh, water park for the day. And then after that, we just decided that we would go to my mom's place for a couple of days until the border was open uh, to go to the States. And then we just enjoyed our time and just relaxed and didn't really have to do anything. So how did your son... Does your son like Anthony? And when he first time we met him, how was it? What was his reaction? He and vice met... and vice versa. Like when Anthony's son met you, what was your reaction? Um, they're both kind of the same. Like when I when I met them, they're just super sweet and they're just adorable. Um, yeah, because I I met I met them the first. It was after the first week of being in the States when I flew out in August because we were already on FaceTime um, nonstop for all of July. And then uh, with Alex, when he met him, when he flew down, we went and picked him up and had him with us for the weekend. Or no, it was for the week, I think, because he was homeschooling at that time. And then that's when I realized that 
he needed to go to real school because he wasn't getting his work done at my mom's place. But no, he was obsessed. Obsessed since day one. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's not a lot of like, not a lot of kids who meet someone new that's going to be in their life for the rest of their life. It's kind of hard for them to adjust to all the new well, things. Yeah, he was excited. He is excited because he's never had a dad before. So, yeah. or other than a fatherly figure of like, you know, grandparents, that's about it. So that's like the first actual man that he's had in his life. Well, that's cool. So now going back to your adult work, what else What else have you done in your life as an adult actress? Shoots, camming. Um, um, Lady of the Night. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, camming, filming, uh, stripping. Um, I think that's it. Do you know. ever want to direct anything? Become a director or producer? There's yeah, there's stuff that I would love to do, but I'm just like, there's just so much stuff, and I'm just like, I wouldn't be able to babysit. Like making sure that everything goes properly, and then I wouldn't be able to deal with like a shit show or you know the drama between people. So now, what what was the first time that you got into porn? It was it was some of your favorite things to watch. Um, myself. <laughs> so I was just like, because like every time I would go on when I was like younger and like checking it out, I'm like, ew. Like it was just awkward watching people because it, it looked like when people were doing certain things or just like, oh, that person could definitely have like their lips, like, you know, pushed out more and more spit and stuff like that. And I'm like, this is brutal. Like, I don't know how people like this. And then, so when I was 30, yeah, 29, 30, I was just like, I guess I'm going to start doing my own stuff and then just making things that I know I like to watch. And then I did that and I was just like, okay, well, clearly that's the only thing that does it for me. Um, because otherwise, the rest of the time it'd be like awkward, and I'm just like, eh, off. Now, what is your experience with exploring and experimenting with different sexual experiences or fantasies? Mm, I don't think I really ever explore or try new things. It's just whatever happens, happens. You never were into like the BDSM type of things like other people, other performers do. I don't really get that whole thing, like, to me, because I've never looked into it. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of vanilla. Interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. I was, yeah. I always, I so always assumed that you would be, like, into, like, other genres of, like, adult things. I, I'm surprised to learn about that. That you're, like, no, kind of, like, 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 mid. Anthony brings up, like, these th things that happen here, like, events and whatnot. And I get so weirded out. I'm like, mm, nah. Like, we did a fashion show, and then it was, like, a kink type thing. And he's like, here, stand and watch and enjoy this. And I'm like, mm-mm, this, not, no, no, thank you. Like, it, it was just awkward for me to, like, stand there. And I'm like, if you were doing this to me at home, great. But I just feel awkward watching other people do it in front of a group of people. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how some people are into that. Like, don't they find it kind of like weird, weirded out about it? As you're watching That's how I feel. People, watching other people do adult things in front of like the whole crowd. Yeah. So now, what are some uh, what are some common misconception about sex work, and how can we challenge those stereotypes? Um. That. Anyone who's in the industry has daddy issues, you know, some sort of drug problem or, you know, has an addiction of some sort or is a troubled person in a sense. And, you know, criminal records, um, 
always getting into trouble. Uh, like I don't have a criminal record. I don't have daddy issues. My family is like my everything. So I'm like very family oriented and it just is ridiculous how people judge the whole industry as one, like together being like, these people are bad, even though it's not because there are people with degrees and, you know, diplomas and whatnot, and that are doing good. And, you know, they're not hurting anyone. They're trying to better certain areas or all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how, how how has adult work helped you with the business side of it? Like to like run like your personal like website and all that stuff. I've learned how to take a step back and just enjoy myself. Because mm -hmm. before... I was always working, always had to do more. And now I'm just like, uh, you know what? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't have to. I can do it later. I can just sit on my computer and I'll figure it out later. So but going back to gaming, so besides the two games you play that you Twitch, what other games do you like to play? Uh, yeah, so lately it's been a lot of Dead by Daylight and um, Fortnite. Um, I updated World of Warcraft and Diablo, so then that way, if Anthony can't play, because that's what we always play together, um, I can jump on to the other two games, and then, you know, Josh or Brandon can jump with me on those games, or whoever else. My dad's been asking me to get Diablo 4 so we can game out together, because nice. he plays that, like, religiously. That's pretty cool. I've never played Diablo for any of the games before. Yeah, with me, it's one, two, three, but I'm like obsessed with three, doing the greater rifts and stuff, especially with the seasonal character. Um, but I have never done four yet because I know if I play four, I'm going to be glued to like figure it out and get going. And especially if I'm with my dad gaming, we'll be on there all day. Mm hmm. So going back to your family, did you have any like cousins or other siblings that were like in the not in the adult industry, but like artists or any type like musicians or anything like that? No, no, you're the one that decided to do like artistic yeah. work. Yeah, I'm the only one out of like the aunts, uncles, cousins, because even my aunt was like, if I could do what you did or could do what you've done. She's like, I totally would have. I'm so proud of you. Like, she'd cry. Because she'd be like, I want to see your stuff. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know, auntie. And she's like, please. I'm just like, okay. I'm just like, I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. How much, how, how, how proud is your son to see you grow and see what you're doing in your life? I'm pretty proud. That's good. Yeah, especially after, like, the body modifications. He's like, Mom, I thought I was going to be scared. And he's like, I want my eyes tattooed. I want this. I want that. Can I have mine when I'm 18? I'm like, uh, we'll see, kiddo. I'm like, you'll have to make a name for yourself before you're 18 and make sure that, you know, you're able to have income coming in a good amount before then. And if you can, sweet. Then I'll allow it. But if not, you're not going to wreck yourself before you can make yourself mm -hmm. so does your um son game also i know yes. i know he's probably young but does he like what what type of games is he is he into he's obsessed with fortnite we actually just logged on to fortnite last night and then all of a sudden it was like you have a gift from and it's from his account because we just gone with the battle pass and uh it was so cute it was a tiny little dinosaur that you're riding on for an emo and i'm like oh I that's cool. That's cool. So now what advice would you ha give to someone struggling to find the right partner? Uh, don't rush it. Just wait, because I didn't rush into marriage or anything. And when we did get married, it was completely random. Like it wasn't planned. We talked about it because, you know, we talked about our child's name before we even got pregnant. Like it was in the, all in the first month. We're just like, we're going to have kids. We're going to do this. Our child's name is going to be Salem. Um, 
Yeah. Just don't rush it because when it's supposed to happen, it will actually happen and you'll know. Mm -hmm. So how was the wedding? Um, it was so good. Um, it happened at January 31st. And we bought my dad's flight. We bought my mom's flight. Sadly, we couldn't have Alex here because he didn't have a passport, which sucks because it would be nice to have him here because then we'd all be together. Um, but yeah, we flew out my parents and then we had it in the backyard. And then we had Slava and Rhea there and then Anthony's family and the kids. And our outfits that we wore for the wedding, we wore just prior to the avian awards um and then i had my blacked out eye contacts that i had before and then he stuck those in and i was like you should uh get your eyes tattooed so speaking of the avian awards was that the time that it, you someone announced that you were pregnant or was that the other award show no so we had met when we had met it was at the alt porn awards last year when we crossed paths with each other and it was magical. Like, I just, it was huge, like, energy pull when I saw him. It was insane, intense. And I couldn't stop thinking about him. And then later that night on the Uber ride back to Slava's, uh, no, back to the, the house. Yeah, it was the shoot house in Vegas. Um, I saw that he had followed. And then I followed back, but I never opened the message or anything. And then I didn't open it until like July 4th. And then that's when he was like telling me that he, he's like, you are a demigod and should be worshipped on something about the knees. And then the only thing, the only offering I have to give you is my soul. And I was like, I accept. So ever since that day, we're just like, <laughs> gave him my phone number, we're texting. And then we started FaceTiming. And then I said that, you know, I was coming to Vegas uh august 1st and i'd like to see him if he had any free time and then we he came and picked me up from the airport that's the first time i had somebody pick me up from an airport bring flowers and surprise me and then th the way he like held me and hugged me i was just like melted because i have so many reels like because i would just he would take videos i would take videos and then i would just like pop them into reels and just like post it and then slava's like you need to stop posting. You're going to lose your fans and followers. I was like, I don't care if those people aren't about us. I don't want them around because the real people are going to stay and support. And, you know, he's not going nowhere. So he's staying. And then it's just like, how would you know? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, if people don't like it, they, they know where to go and how to get there. Mm -hmm. They so either how, how are your handle, uh, fans handling all this? Because I know some people probably had crush on you. And then until they realized that you're married to a very handsome fella. <laughs> until they're married to a very handsome fella. Um, well, because I am i don't sit there and make chit-chat with people. Mm. I don't flirt on my pages. Um, even on, like, uh, the paid sites, I don't sit there and flirt and make chit-chat. To me, that's, that's no. Mm -hmm. um, even, like, in the club and stuff, like, I'm very uh, Business-oriented? Exactly. So I'm always like, because girls are always like trying to gain regulars and be like, oh, I'm single. I'm this. I'm that, even though they're married. I'm like, the truth is going to come out and then you're going to lose that regular. And then um, usually I, I do really well at work, but because it was spring and I never work spring or I'm always doing other things, I always avoid that slow season. I experience the worst, but I don't care. And people are like, oh, how, what would it take to marry a woman like you? I'm like, actually, I am married. And they're just like, oh, what, really? And I'm like, yeah. They're like, I'm not going to give you my money now. I was like, I don't care. Somebody else will. <laughs> Somebody else will throw it on stage. Um, or, you know, it's I have my loyal fans and followers and friends that do support. So it's great because they still sub, they still subscribe, they still send, you know, whatever on whatever site, like, it's nothing has changed That's cool. but because of how honest I've always been. I've never seen a negative effect from it. It's impressive. And I'm always because like a lot of, sorry to interrupt you, because a lot of people who have like spoken about the real life and they got like backlash from their fans and then they don't know how to handle it. And the fans like, 
screw you, we're going to go to someone else to support them. Yeah. Like, they're always going to come back because, like, oh, I got screwed over. I can't believe people aren't honest like you, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, well, welcome back. Mm -hmm. So now, how do you handle conflicts or disagreements in your relationship with Anthony as a married couple? Um, I am very emotional. Mm -hmm. I overthink. And so we just I blow up and then we just talk through it and I'm yeah <laughs> you have to make you have to work on it to make it perfect mm -hmm. I suck so now what hobbies or interests do you uh, do you like to do outside of your work besides gaming what else are you interested in lately sleeping sleeping and eating I can go with sleeping I only yeah. sleep five hours a night, and I feel it the next day every day. It also doesn't help that I also doesn't help that I deal with two uh, medical issues, so that also affects my sleep. But it's not fun. Yeah. No, um, I'm always tired, especially because being anemic and then pregnancy, it's even worse. So I'm like tired all the time, and it's not just tired, tired. It's like ultra tired. Like it's hard to get up. You're just like. Like getting up this morning and I'm like, oh, I got to get up and do this. But my alarm clock went off so many times and I'm like, because I, I set up for like 7 something PM, mm -hmm. 745. So I was just like, okay, well, now it's time to finally get up and actually do something. Yeah, I don't know what's been going on with me the last like three uh, recordings I've done. But as soon as a guest has to come on, I get super nauseous for some reason. I don't know why, but what's been going on with me? Might be the screen. I don't know. But at least at least we know you're not pregnant <laughs> that's true that's true so i know the last time you came on my show you mentioned you like horror movies and stuff so have yeah. you seen any horror movies lately uh so the devil uh, what was that elevator one no evil within the new one with um the elevator and the hat like the apartment and stuff like that that was so good I went and saw that like three different times in the theater um I saw the last omen mm -hmm. and I didn't realize it was based off the first one and then it's like a prequel to the other one so like it was the first movie but last movie it was so good um I think if we, if we saw another horror movie but i don't know it's kind of just a blur the latest one that i saw though was the new planet of the apes i've seen those a little bit oh, I've seen off and on a little bit of those movies i'm obsessed it's so good so how did you get into interest in horror in the horror genre to begin with uh i would watch um pet cemetery at the age of two for bed I just pop it in to the VHS. My parents would pop it in, and we'd just be like, I just remember watching it. And then, obviously, when I was old enough to put it in, I would just have that in my room all the time, and I'd be playing it every night. So, what are some of your four uh, favorite horror characters? Uh, Pennywise, um, Ghostface, um, the chick from The Exorcist. Mm hmm. Um, Jason Voorhees. Um, I'm just like drawing blanks right now. Uh, pregnancy brain is the worst. Uh, I like my 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 all time favorite. Oh, Saw. Um, my all time favorite though is like Human Torture. So like Hostel, the Saw movies, because. It's some sort of torture in some way. Mm -hmm. um, or like the mindfuck movies. Like Get Out, which isn't scary, but it's just messed up. Every time you watch it, it's always something new. Mm -hmm. um, or like The Living Dead, where it's possession and messed up in some way. But 
Yeah, uh, all, Stephen, all Stephen King movies. Nice, nice. So now, how does it feel like being a mom and working in the adult industry? Um, it's been normal. It hasn't been hard, especially with having a supportive family and everything. Um, I've never had any issues with it in the 14 years. Well, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17 years that I've been doing it, but 14 years on like dancing and stuff. It's been it's been easy, and because of uh, them knowing everything, it's never been. I've never had to hide anything or you know hate what I do because of it. It's just I had their full support. Mm-hmm. So have you ever have you ever thought about doing like browsers or any of these popular like yes street, but like, companies? I need to be able to work legally in the States to mm-hmm. do so. Mm-hmm. So uh, Slava had a shoot lined up with browsers, but I can't, I couldn't legally work in the States. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now I have my status and everything. So we'll see what happens after baby comes. If, uh, I mean, I'm kind of wanting another one after this because I, I don't want to be done <laughs> being mm-hmm. pregnant. I'm enjoying it mm-hmm. other than the morning sickness. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, at some point that time will come. So now going back to gaming, what is your opinion on remastered or remade game? Are they necessary or just a cash grab? Uh, I think they're just cash grab. Depends though. If it's like bad graphics and stuff like that and they redid it and it's like even better, that's sick. But if they're just redoing it, like... It's annoying with the whole World of Warcraft thing when they're always like bringing out new things, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. I just enjoy doing certain things on there. So the fact that you have to like keep upgrading and updating it and paying for more and the subscription and stuff, I'm just like, why can't you be like the other sites where you don't pay those monthly subscriptions and then just enjoy the game? I know I asked you this question last time, but. If you could be in a video game world, what would that video game world be and why? Uh, I think now at this time, it'd be Fortnite. Why so? Back then, I would, I never played it and I didn't care for it. And now I'm just like, there's just so many different things you can do. There's so many different people you can pick from. There's so many, you know, it, it's just sick. I've never played Fortnite, but I've heard it's very, very popular. What what people the people who have never played the game tell us about it? Because you I, I three minutes, so tell us about the game. I just started video. this year. I finally just started playing it this year. My son's been playing it since two thousand nineteen, mm-hmm. uh, two thousand twenty, uh, or twenty twenty. Um, so yeah, I started playing it this year because um, Anthony and all his kids play, all his two older older ones, um, and Alex plays. I've tried to play in the past and I hated it. And then I finally played with Anthony and his oldest son and his daughter. And then I was just like, because the people that I played with before, I was just like, hey, like, I don't know how to play any of this. I don't know how the controls work. Practically, I had to do it for myself and it was horrible. And then so sitting here playing with them, he's like, oh, press this button, do this button, do this, do that. And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty easy. I suck, so I get backpacked through it every time. But we always do good. Yeah, I'm not a I'm not a good gamer either. I I was playing um NBA 2K24 after a very long time, and I sucked at it. I'm not. I'm a very like average gamer. So now, um, what? Hold on. Now, can you share a funny or embarrassing moment in from your life? Uh, let's see here. Where, where do you want me to start it? However you want to answer the question. Um, no, nothing is really too embarrassing other than, oh yeah, I stemmed off when we were talking about the, um, baby shower or baby gender reveal Mm -hmm. at the award show and completely went off topic. Um, most embarrassing moment I've shit myself I've pissed really? myself <laughs> really yeah um at work especially on stage I was eating um chick uh not chick um 
Swish LA. It was 2017, the beginning of 2017. I was working at Eden uh, and I just demolished this quarter chicken leg with, uh, I think it was rice or fries and the Swish LA sauce. So good. But then I had to go on stage within not even like 15 minutes. So I got dressed, whatever. And then I thought I could just let out this little part. And then so I just like grabbed my outfit and like went to go put my butt up in the air and just like try to make it look all cute and pull the underwear off just so I can like let it out. And then all of a sudden it was not that. And I was like, okay. So I quickly just like awkwardly took off my pants while sitting down and then I like scooted my butt on my blanket and then just like tossed everything in my bag and I was like okay playtime even though it wasn't playtime yet and I looked up at the DJ and I was like going like this so we quickly did it and I got off and he's like what happened and I was like I shit myself on stage and he's like what and I told him what happened he's like oh god why don't you just let me let you off I was like because if I was to get off stage I wouldn't make any money mm-hmm because we're only like the third song in so you have to like dance for a full 18 minutes before they'll start your playtime so then he's just like oh god i don't know how you did that he's like did anybody notice i was like no i'm not i'm just i'm glad that shit didn't go that on anyone's face oh god nobody knew nobody knew it was it just happened so quickly and so i was just like all awkward because yeah that's embarrassing (laughs) you hear anything else Besides mm-hmm. shitting in your pants? No, not really. Other than this whole pregnant... Oh, I went golfing with my dad um, back in June. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had hit my ball shorter than what it was. But it, he was like, oh, the ball's over here. And I'm like, okay. So I went to go run. And then all of a sudden, just all... I just started pissing. And I'm just like... Mm well clearly I can't run no more he starts laughing my dad's like what was that I was like I think I just pissed myself he's like didn't you just go to the bathroom like yeah and he's just like oh that is your pregnancy problems (laughs) and I'm like oh thanks dad thanks Mm -hmm. so much so are you do you watch any comedy skits are you into any comedians not really other than just like some comedy movies like Melissa McCarthy and her husband I just love watching them together because they're hilarious. And then uh, Step Brothers or Seth Rogen with uh, Knocked Up. So now can you describe a pivotal moment in your life that significantly influenced your personal development? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. I... I don't think I can pinpoint that. No. <laughs> I could move on then. Now, what is the craziest adventure or experience that you've had by yourself or with Anthony? The craziest experiences that I've had other than getting my body modifications mm-hmm. is when Anthony and I got together and then we just, we've done things that people do in like a five to 10 year span of time like it's insane um like especially because i've never had it okay yeah now we'll go back to the alt porn for this year so last year um was my second award show Mm -hmm. that i attended but this time i was actually not had nominations and stuff and then um I brought my uh, permanent makeup artist with me as my plus one. And then this year I was excited because I was like, oh, we actually got a picture on the red carpet together. Um, Because last year I just Photoshopped us into one together (laughs) because we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. We didn't speak to each other, nothing. So I just Photoshopped us together into the photo. And uh, I, yeah, I was like, I'm excited. We could be on the red carpet together. We got Slava to... We on FaceTime with my mom on the red carpet with the gender uh, card. So we mm-hmm. didn't know what we were having. And I had this card on me already for a week or so. So I didn't I didn't know the gender. He didn't know the gender. So we we're going to find out after the, the pictures were posted from the red carpet. 
of it. Um, we, yeah, we were on the red carpet. And then he's just like, kiss me. So then we were like kissing. And then Slava had the envelope or the card open. And then our favorite event photographer was taking the photos for us. And then um, we go in because that was like almost halfway through the the award show. And then when it came to intermission, after um, Daisy Ducati did her burlesque show, they called us up on stage. Well, they started off with the story and then called us up on stage. And I was just like, oh God. So we went up there and then, you know, told us that, you know, like, oh, where do you guys, like, um, eventually the videos will be done because we it's all recorded and stuff like that. Slava has it all recorded. So once it's finally released, I'm going to post it up. And I'm so excited because I ugly cry when I see the pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're on stage and he's like, what are you guys wanting? I'm like a girl. And then, you know, Anthony's like a girl. Uh, and then when he announced it, that it was a girl, I just like ugly cried up there and I'm just like turning away from everybody because it was a full room because it was an award show and we, there's never been a gender reveal at an award show before. Mm -hmm. So like, what, what, It, it was insane. It was very insane. That's cool. That must have been a very cool experience to. Uh, it was. Slava like was crying. You're, the photographer you're about your was crying. Gender in front of the whole uh, audience. Yeah, like and we have like the photos and everything from that night, and I'm just like. So you've you have attended AVM before, right? Yes, we. I attended AVM for the first time this year, and Anthony was my date. How was that? How is that? How's the award show and? I don't know if you ever go to the after parties, but how how's that whole thing? Uh, so we were at the expo because I was signing all week. And then um, he was with me the whole time, helping me set up. And then he would like, you know, put everything away from me. And then we were, I had different outfits. So he'd help me like, you know, prep for all that. And then he would match my outfits. And then when people would want pictures or whatever, or if people would talk, because I'm awkward, I'm, like, I'm socially awkward. He would I'm come also, in. Don't worry about it. He would come in and speak for me. It was it was it was amazing. And then yeah, the AVNs definitely wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Like I was excited for it, mm-hmm. but like it's insane how evil other people can be when the nominations are up. Like oh, really, I didn't yeah, know about like, that. Just the how race, so? like, like how like so? The, just like the racism the like you know the just just how rude people are like booing with mm. when the picture's on stage or whatever and i'm just like okay and then yeah it was just very clicky i think so it, it was a good experience i i love that we got to go and then you know um he was my plus one and he had a free like vip ticket so we got to walk the red carpet together because at first like oh he can't be with you i'm like well we're together and i'm not taking photos separately because it's him and i so i yeah i loved every second of that Mm. i just gotta fix this chair that's so interesting to hear about like people are like being like rude to other like postcards and stuff at the award show i wouldn't ever thought about that i thought everyone was so like like this with each other, like caring and stuff. There, but there, there are some that are just not because. They have like ego. Yeah, like they're not big names, but they're also the people that have like, the drama all over Twitter. Oh, I see. Yeah. Mm. So like you know the professionals are professional, but then you know you have other people who, aren't so. And that's where that was coming from, and I'm like. It was so awkward. So how, I know you just talked about, not the war show, but the uh, author erotica, like, conference. How is that, like, as an artist for you? For the, like, like the, the awards? Yeah, the, the, not the awards. Like, you never, have you ever gone to the conventions? Like, all these other uh, stars do, like, go make a, set up a booth and, like, uh, see your fans? That's, yeah, that's that's what I did with AVN. I was at okay. the fixing booth for the whole okay. week. 
So people are scheduled. I had set scheduled times to go and it was just sick because like um, one of my fans from TikTok was like there almost every day. It's like, I bought an all weekend pass to come see you guys. And, you know, he was stoked to meet Anthony and yeah, he came and then he would just buy like something every day, just like a picture or a poster and then, or just wanted to take a picture with me and I wasn't charging for pictures, but then he'd be like, here you go. And then he'd always bring like a friend and I'm just like, well, oh, you guys are so sweet. So speaking of pricing, how do you like in your OnlyFans like page and like when you're doing signings, do you like, pr- how do you price everything out for yourself so you don't overcharge your fans? Uh, so with OnlyFans, I charge $30 a month because it has all my full videos on there. It's not like, you know, pay-per-view. It has everything on there. So you pay 30 bucks, you could just look at everything. You can rewatch everything. Everything's on there. And now that they have like the labels on top, so you can click, which Anthony showed me, he's like, hey, you need to do this. So then that way people can click up there and get those specific things. So I don't have to scroll through your page. I'm like, what? And then when I did that, I was like, oh, that's so easy. That's, that's way better. Um, and then... Um, with uh, AVN there we had because it's just like being on stage to me like magnets five dollars you get a magnet um you know usually ten dollars for a poster but I had like interest and print me off like a little print that I can sign so I was like I'll do that one for ten dollars and I can do like the big giant 11 by 17 posters for 20 and you know I had it all neatly laid out bought stuff on amazon to organize everything and then yeah people went through them and they're just like oh i want this so it was like i think one magnet for five dollars um three for ten or something five for twenty i don't i don't remember what it was um but yeah it, it went well just like signing everything taking a lot of photos people just coming around doing like podcast type stuff like interviews it was... i gotta go i gotta go to one of those next year and like interview so many like so many adult stars that i've like follow online on twitter and then you sick. and then you in person that'd be, that'd awesome. be so sick yeah so how much did you make from the uh the whole booth thing that you did that you set up at avian uh, well, I didn't set up the booth. I mean, I you didn't set up, but how much did you make, like, as an art for yourself? Not, not that much. I didn't really make anything because, like, I was my first time there. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, it's like, yeah, it was my first AVN. Not the first time I've been nominated for AVNs, but my first time at the Expo Award Show. And then, you know, I went to XRCO just before that. I went to the Urban X before that. I went to uh the alt star awards before that so i already had three award shows before then that i attended two that yeah and then i was also nominated in um and then yeah so it like i wasn't paid to be there i was just practically there for free and if i i made money then that's what happened Mm -hmm. okay so now let's wrap up this uh show now what artist or band do you recommend to my listeners and why uh tickle me pink it's been my all-time favorite band number one right next to rise against since day one since i was like 17 like it's it's different but it's good like madeline um is like my all-time number one from them in other bands that you enjoy listening to? Yeah. Uh, Rise Against. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, it's just like, I I used to be obsessed with a bunch of different bands, but now with Spotify, where you can have like playlists, it's just whatever now. Like I just have like an ADHD type playlist that goes from like every genre. And then, you know, there's Jelly Roll on there. There is... Uh, Steve Stone, there's um, Say When, there's Dax, there's NF, there's uh, Evanescence, uh, 
Marilyn Manson, Disturbed. It's, it's just so random. I know I would say that you, I think it was you who shared about Falling Reverse and that got me into that band. I'm like, holy shit, Ronnie Radke, how much hate he gets. He's very talented. Yeah. Yeah. I showed, I showed Falling in Reverse to Anthony and his daughter's like the way she sings to the remake of. Reimagine? Uh, the, what song is that? Papa, uh, the Papa Roach song. Uh, Last Resort. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've gotten to him. Yeah, I've listened to him like religiously now after I, after you shared about him on your show on Instagram. Yeah, it's so good. Mm -hmm. So now, if you, I know I asked you this question before. I don't know if you have an answer to this now, but if you had the attention of the world for five minutes, what would you want to tell them? Um, yeah, I think you have, and I don't remember what I said before, but I'm just, don't care what other people think and just do your thing. At this point, I'm just like, I can't be bothered with, you know, little things from other people. And I'll just... lastly, and lastly, where can people find you online? Uh, DarcyDiamond.ca easy simple everything's all there got it and then you guys can follow me on my youtube channel which is at hawkett media that's where you'll find my interviews my game streams and soon to be related photography the things that's to be determined thank you so much darcy for coming on the show today thank you